Well, we want to set the timing on the old 5.7 Chevy and the manual, bless its heart, says to look at this label on the fan radiator to set the timing. So basically what this thing says is that the timing should be at zero degrees and it should be done with the engine at idle, which is an automatic idle, and with the computer connector or the advanced connector disconnected. Now the advanced connector just happens to be behind a shroud that's located up here on the firewall and if you look you can see this connector right here that has to be disconnected when you set the timing at zero degrees. Now what I've done is I've more or less marked the zero degree timing mark on the uh, damper wheel and down there you'll see the timing indicator. And what we're going to do is get out the timing light and set this puppy to check it and see if it's okay. I've taken a still image of the radiator emblem just for a little more clarity so you can see it a little bit better I hope in the video. Okay, here's the setup. I've got an inductive connector connected to uh, spark plug wire number one which is on this front side of the engine, same as the timing wire. Timing light here. And uh, power supplied by the battery. That connector disconnected. I can connect it. I, the idle speeds up just a tad. There we go. Okay, we've got the connector disconnected at the firewall. Let me back, go back and look at what this timing looks like here. I don't know how well you can see that, but the timing looks to be about two degrees advanced. And I'm at 7,000 foot altitude, so I think I'll just kind of leave that. Besides, the engine is really not warmed up that well. So I'm going to let it warm up and see what happens. Set the timing. What we do is we loosen the base nut on the distributor and rotate it until that timing came in at exactly zero degrees. But I think two degrees is probably fairly typical for the elevation that we're at, just to get a little bit more advanced. The engine, by the way, has not been pinging, so I think we're in good shape. So let me tell you what I've done here. I have plugged my computer into the OBD1 connector, and I'm running a software called WinALDL. And you can see the computer is sending messages to the software and as it begins to populate the software we get the messages scrolling across the screen so we can tell if everything's working. In the dash display you see the speed in miles per hour and the RPM of the engine. Now what I'm going to do is take this thing on a test drive. Also notice the map sensor, the throttle position sensor, and the oxygen sensor. Now the oxygen sensor usually reads between 0 and 1 volts so this oxygen sensor is new and it looks like it's working pretty good. Uh, let's take the puppy for a test drive now down the road and around the bend and see just how everything performs and how the system works. Okay, here's the flag data. You can see that, that some data is flagged, uh, really nothing, nothing significant. Here's the sensor data, all the sensors on the automobile and basically what they're reading in raw unit values. Everything looks to be working. Here's the air codes. The only air code code set is this electronic spark control, which is what I disconnected a while earlier. Huh? Okay, this, this matrices fills in as you drive around. And you notice we're still sitting in the driveway island because my speed's zero. Uh, we're back at the raw data. Let's take the, let's take the truck on a, little, on a little jaunt out around and see what's going on. I've just started a log of the data so I can, I can have a, 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 a text file of what's going on here. Okay, here's the a, here's a sensor data. Once again, you can look at all the sensors. Look at my speed, two, six. I'm going to take it on about a, eh, maybe a half a mile little trip around the neighborhood just to get the thing warmed up and get all the sensors going and make sure everything's working. You can see there my oxygen sensor kicks, kicks back and forth and that controls the fuel-air mixture. No obvious problems just yet. Everything up here, everything's working fine on this engine. As a matter of fact, I took it to the state emissions testing station and it passed with flying colors, almost half of what, uh, what the limits were on all of the crucial elements. I was concerned about it, but no problem. Everything's working fine on this vehicle. 
no sensor errors except you saw that electronic speed control error which of course uh, was because we disconnected the electronic speed control. A Win ALDL is the program, it's free online and I'm coming into a USB port that's connected to the OBD1 connector on the pickup truck. Great analysis tool to work on your vehicles. OBD1 uh, type electronics which means not very many sensors and a very very slow computer. Of course the truck's 1989 I don't know what else to expect from uh, from what's going on. Battery voltage 13.8 knock counter, 3 knock uh, BLM. I don't really know what a lot of these are. Here we're back at all the raw data as it come, as it's coming out and scrolling out as the computer feeds it to the to the. I guess you can hear the truck running in the background. I got the microphone on the laptop picked it up. This is just a kick around laptop that I'm uh, running this program on. Very very uh, low CPU usage. On okay, here's a here's a matrices of, of uh, spark counts. And ba basically, this is this is NOx. You see, we got three NOx, 400 RPMs. Uh, 75 uh, uh, on the map sensor, and we're, we just got another knock at 1200 because I'm I'm accelerating. But the but uh, the engine really isn't pinging, and the green square indicates where we are currently. Okay, uh, here we are with the O2 sensor at the various indications, at the various speeds. It'll just pick that up and as it feeds the data to the to the. I'm hoping this displays when I put it onto YouTube, but I'm afraid the display is probably going to be so muffled that you're not able to see it. Sensor data, once again, I hope the display displays, but I don't know just how great it's going to be once it's, once it's up on YouTube. Anyway, you can play around with it yourself because it, these programs are all in the public domain and very easy to obtain, very easy to use on your old vehicles. And this vehicle is almost a classic. In Colorado, they become a classic at 25 years. It's a 1989, so we're at, we're at 12 years. Again, the vehicle passed emissions with flying colors. Passed the state emissions with flying colors. I'm going to cut a lot of this out of here, so if the video is kind of chopped up, you'll understand that I've, I've, I've edited parts and pieces of it so I and then when we when we, we start to see the things warmed up you can see I'm at 186 degrees Fahrenheit on my coolant you can see the warm it's warmed up and the idle speed should drop back to a normal uh, uh, 700 to 800 RP of this ALDL sequence uh, send me an email I'll send you this I'll, I'll give you a link to the video I don't know if I can mail it's quite large See how big it is. Whew, 132 megabytes. Okay, here we're back to the knock sensor. See, we haven't we haven't seen too many more knocks, and even though in routine driving everything seems to be fine with this with this vehicle. Matter of fact, I might be able to advance it just a bit more, get some better gas mileage. The the unit on the highway, the three to 5.7 is averaging about 20 miles to the gallon, which is not bad for a heavy truck with this cross. Took my foot off. The only air code set, lecture data, flag data. Really don't know what this really means. High gear flag, and then the, the raw data. There, there, you can see the electronic spark timing flag set. Simple computer. To the garage. So everything is working on this vehicle. It's 22 years old. Probably 23 because it was built in 87.